in order to determine which one, um, if basically getting the 16 gigabyte model being the extra is worth it from the perspective of a DaVinci Resolve user. So to the left side, we have the one with the eight gigabytes and to the right, we have the one with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. If you decided to get one of the new Macs with the M1 chip, you'll be faced with a decision that you need to make. Uh, these Macs, the new ones, are available with two configurations when it comes to RAM. You have the 8 gigabyte model versus the 16 gigabyte model. So I ended up buying the 16 gigabyte model and uh, I uh, prepared a long list of things I want to test, you know, comparing both systems. So I have good news and bad news. Let's start. Just a reminder, our Black Friday sale ends tomorrow. Get $600 of the Ultimate DaVinci Resolve Course Bundle. The bundle includes all of our Resolve courses, access to the world's largest practice footage library, and our best-selling Vivid Pro LUT pack. So to the left side, we have the one with the eight gigabytes. This is the Mac mini I've been using for the past week. And to the right, we have the one with 16 gigabytes of RAM. They're both opening copies uh, of the same project files. And we're going to check the playback performance. Now let's start with an easy test. I'll try playing an HD Pro Res 422 file on an HD timeline with two basic nodes added. And let's play. And as expected, they're both playing this footage back at 24 frames per second without any problem. Let's repeat the same test again, however, this time with noise reduction added. Play. And um, this one we're getting 16 frames per second, and on this one we're getting actually 17, 24. The point is both are not playing the footage in real time, so in this regard they're identical, even though this one has more RAM. Now let's try 4K this time. So we'll try to play a 4K clip that is 4 press 422. So let's play. And this is just compressed footage. This is actually ProRes and it's expected to play very easy, but it, we just have the test here. I'm just trying to test all the scenarios. Now repeating the same exact test, however, with noise reduction added. And let's play. And again, they're both not playing it back in real time. We have four frames here and three frames actually to the right. Now let's move to Red Draw. So we're going to be playing a 4K Red Draw clip, however, on an HD timeline. Let's play. And as expected, both are playing the footage without any problem. So this is the uh, 4K RAW on an HD timeline. And now let's repeat the same test after adding many nodes to the clips. And we'll play, and they're both playing at 24 frames per second without any problem, and everything is just playing back in, in real time. There is no issue at all here. So both systems are identical so far. And now let's switch to 6K. We'll try to play a 6K withdraw file still on an HD timeline. Play, and as expected, they're both playing back in real time. Now let's try to push the systems even further. I'm going to be adding four basic nodes to the uh, 6K files. And now this is the same clip, 6K, and we're playing it back in, in real time on both systems. They're both identical without any problem. Now let's move to an 8K file. So this is an 8K withdrawal file still on an HD timeline with no effects uh, added and the proxy mode turned off. Let's play. And they both cannot play it in real time. So they're both giving me around nine frames per second of playback. In order to make the playback uh, better, let's try dropping the playback resolution of the timeline to half resolution. Play, and uh, yeah, they're both playing it fine. There's, there are no issues at all. Let's try adding uh, a lot of nodes now in order to try and make the uh, playback a bit harder in both systems. Let's play, and they're both playing back in real time. Remember, this is on half resolution, but you're still editing an 8K file. Okay, so all the previous tests were done on an HD timeline. So uh, let's now repeat the tests with the 4K. So now uh, let's try to play uh, a 4K red draw file, however, this time on an actual 4K timeline. So let's try to play both clips. And again, they're both playing in real time without any issues. These are 4K raw clips on a 4K timeline. So again, let's try to make this a bit harder by now repeating the same test, however, after adding many nodes. Let's play, and they both play back again in real time, no issues at all on both systems. And now let's move to playing 6K red raw files on a 4K timeline. Both playing in real time, this is 4K raw on the eight gigabytes with, without any problem on a 4K timeline. 
So again, let's try to make this a bit harder by now repeating the same test, however, after adding many nodes. Let's play, and again, 6K raw on a 4K timeline with color correction, and both systems are playing it back in real time. So now let's move to 8K. Again, we're going to be trying to play an 8K red raw file, however, this time on a 4K timeline instead of HD, no effects and proxy mode in half. Now remember, I'm setting proxy mode in half this time because on an HD timeline, Line, we couldn't play the uh, 8K uh, file with full resolution, so it makes sense on 4K to start from half resolution. And let's try to play, and even though we're in half resolution, still both systems cannot play it back in real time. Let's try to drop the playback resolution of the timeline to quarter this time to see if uh, these systems can play 8K back in real time. Play, and uh, this time both of them are playing it well. Let's try pushing the system a bit now by adding many nodes in order to try to push the system system a bit. Yeah, and even the one with color uh, correction is playing in real time without any issues. So yeah, if you decided to edit 8K for any reason on these systems, you can drop the playback resolution of, of the timeline to quarter and it will run uh, without any issues even with uh, color correction and grading applied. And now to the ultimate test. Let's try to play an 8K red raw file, however, on an actual 8K timeline this time. So I'm going to start by dropping the proxy mode up to quarter resolution. So let's play. And no, it cannot, both cannot play it uh, in real time. So 8K raw clip on 8K timeline with quarter resolution and we reached the limit of the systems. However, remember that you can still edit 8K on both of these machines on a 4K timeline without any problem, with, which is what most people will do. They will edit the 8K on either an HD or a 4K timeline. Um, the point here is that so far, both systems have been performing identical. We did not find a single task where the 8 gigabyte performed worse than the 16 gigabyte. And now let's move to H.265. It's a new compression scheme that allows us to achieve very small file sizes while retaining the quality of the file. However, the downside is that it's hard to play on most systems, even expensive ones. So let's start now with an HD X.265 file on an HD timeline, no effects and the proxy mode turned off. Let's play and it's just playing like butter, basically there's no problem at all. Remember, this is one of the hardest, if not the hardest format to play on most systems. And let's repeat the same test again, so the same file, but with two basic uh, color correction and grading nodes added. And let's play and uh, again, uh, with HEVC it's playing like butter. Uh, basically with a couple of nodes added. So let's try testing 4K files now. So now we'll play a 4K H.265 file on a 4K timeline, no effects and with proxy mode turned off. And let's play, and again, HEVC 4K playing identical on both systems without any problem. And now let's try adding two basic nodes to see if this pushes the system in any way. And next we have the same clip, but now with a couple of effects uh, added, and uh, there's no problem at all playing 4K HEVC. So at this point I got intrigued. So far, I haven't been able to find a tangible difference between both systems, at least in terms of playback, of course. So I added four instances of this 4K H.265 clip on a 4K timeline, and uh, I added two nodes per instance and made sure that proxy mode is off. Play. And uh, yeah, there was a bit of a stutter here at the beginning for a second, but that's expected. So yeah, let's, both systems so far are identical. Uh, the, this is 4K HEVC footage on a 4K timeline, and there is no problem at all. Okay, so in order to push the system even further, let's try playing uh, a 12K file uh, from the new Blackmagic camera. So we have a 12K BMD RAW file uh, playing on a 4K timeline with no effects and the proxy mode turned off. Play. And there was a stutter on both system in the beginning, but eventually it played back in 4K with no problem. However, in previous tests, I ran into some stutters on both systems with this, uh, with this format. And now with the same exact file, I'm just going to add two basic nodes and see if that changes things in any way. Yeah, and it's just playing without any problem at all. Frankly, they both stuttered a bit but that's expected if you're going to be working with 12K files. So now let's try playing two 12K clips side by side on a 4K timeline with the proxy mode turned off. And let's play. And uh, they're both playing at around 
like 20 frames per second. However, the playback becomes smooth after a while, but definitely not from the beginning. So I wouldn't say they can play this in real time. Both machines were identical. So this one stuttered a bit and this one stuttered a bit. However, notice, notice a slight difference between both systems. Notice that when I move to the, uh, the first editing point, so I move the play hit from here to here, if I do this, it moves instantly. This is the uh, one with 16 gigs of RAM. However, this one, there's a small delay. Take a look at the screen here. Once I move the playhead from one edit point to the next and okay, the delay disappeared, but there was a delay. So yeah, we managed to find a difference. Of course, this is a joke. This difference is totally negligible uh, when you look at the prices of these machines. So now to the good news and the bad news. Now, the good news is that you can totally uh, spend uh, less uh, money on this. This is for $699 and edit 12k raw. Yeah, please note that I'm only discussing this from the perspective of a starting filmmaker who doesn't have the budget. Because if you have the budget, you should always get, uh, you know, the better thing because this will be future proof, for example. These tests uh, assume that you're only using DaVinci Resolve. So um, if you decide to open like some other softwares with it or performing a lot of uh, other intensive tasks while you're working on Resolve at the same time, in that case, the 16 gigabyte model would work best. Please note that this recommendation is based on uh, a 24 uh, frames per second timeline, which most people do anyway, that that's the most popular format. And it's based on playback and not maybe uh, creating a very large fusion file. The bad news is that my dreams were shattered because I basically looked at the eight gigabyte model and was like, oh my God, what can this 16 gigabyte model do when I started having dreams? And it turned out to be identical. So um, that's the bad news, but the good news is that you can totally uh, get the eight gigabyte model. Frankly, uh, when it comes just to editing on Resolve, uh, their performance is like, almost identical. So if you're ready to learn Resolve, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve crash course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com